Hello! After a rather long break, I welcome you back to the next part of my tutorial series about programming the Atari 8-bit computers and today we are talking about the display list. In part 8 I presented you this nice um, website of GURI where you can see the different graphic modes and uh, their resolution and number of colors. And you see that there are text modes, there are text modes with different sizes, uh, there can also be combined modes with text modes and graphics modes and uh, area where you have 40 character resolution text output. So you already see there is a difference between what on the Atari is a graphics mode and what on most other machines, also on your PC for example, is a graphic mode. Because um, not typically on a video chip you set the graphic mode and it applies to the whole screen. Yeah, like we are in text mode or you're not, or you're in high resolution mode or you're not. On the Atari this is different. On the Atari the screen is constructed out of the display list by the chip called Antic, the television interface adapter, which is a real microprocessor with a small instruction set and a program, and this program actually defines how your screen looks like from top to bottom. So let's look at the display list. When you boot up your Atari, this is the initial screen you get and already there you see a display list which generates this upper area. Yeah, let's change the border color so we see where this area actually starts. So where you have this upper area with some initial blank lines which are used to center the screen on a PAL TV. And then you have 24 lines of text with a blue background and a light foreground. So let's see how this display looks looks like. We enter the debugger, remove the windows that we don't need, and now we have to know where the display list starts. The display list uh, is part of Antic, and the pointer to the display list has a shadow register which can be read and this is at location 230 and we see it's 9C20. Altera has a built-in command to display the display list so maybe we can first look at it in uh, binary form. So let's see how it, what this looks like at 9C20. Uh, okay and here we see a sequence of bytes. Every byte is one instruction basically. There are some instructions that uh, take three bytes. And this first instruction, first three instructions, they generate these empty lines here. And then you see a number of two, 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 two. And all these twos, every single two means one line of text. So how can we see this? We can see this exactly in this overview. And we see graphics mode zero, this is where the text mode is, has antic mode 2. Yeah, and this is the 2 that you see in this display list. And there are a number of 2's and it all ends with 41209C. And what you see is this is the start address again. And that's a loop. Yeah, this is waiting for vertical blank. So we displayed all the lines that we want to display. And now we have to tell the video chip to wait and not display anything until the new screen starts, new frame starts, and where to actually go when starting a new frame. Yeah, in this case we go to the begin of the display list again. Altira and most other um, emulators have built-in commands to display the uh, display list in a more readable form. So when I enter dump dlist, yeah, I get this already compressed and you see it's three times 70 which means eight blank scan lines followed by a mode 2 line and 23 additional mode 2 lines ultimately wait for the screen to end and jump again to the begin of this display list. So this display list program it is an endless loop because every 50th of a second or 60th of a second under NTSC a new screen is generated and typically it's the same screen. This is why it's uh, looping to the same address. And now we have one thing left and that's actually this at 9C40 
and we see what's there in this 9C40, and we see it also on the left, because there are some scattered bytes, this is actually the screen memory. So when you tell the video chip to display something, you have to tell the video chip also where to pick this from the RAM or the ROM. And this is exactly what you do by adding 40 to the mode line. Yeah, so we see we have here the 02, 02, 02, which means a text line. And here's also a 2, but the bit with a uh, 60, number 64, 40, is set. And that means not only to display a line, but it also tells NTIC where to start fetching data from. In this case, it's fetching data from 9C, 40, and that's the upper left right of this text screen. Yeah, and this ready that you see here, this is actually this ready in the screen code, yeah, where this is what you expect. Uh, it's not displayed as ready here because screen code is different from ASCII. Yeah, and this display here it typically displays um, ASCII. Okay, so how can we go ahead with this display list and what can we do with it? Um, I learned it the hard way. I just poked around and changed every value and found out what it did. Nowadays you don't have to do this. We have this nice thing called Internet. And we have also this nice thing called Woodson IDE, which comes with a built-in help system. And it also contains some hardware-specific information that was reproduced from the Internet. Uh, with the permission of the authors, of course. And here you also have the antic reference, which shows you the uh, registers of the antic. And there is display list low and display list high, which is the hardware pointer to the display list program. And here you also have this overview of the instruction set of the antic. In a compressed form, here you see the different mode lines again, as you have already seen them on the wiki page. And there are ways to generate blank lines from one to eight blank lines. In this case, the lower four bits are zero. So you have the value 00, which means one blank line, scan line in this case, uh, 10, which means two, and so on. Then we have mode lines. Mode lines uh, specify the mode in the lower four bits. You can specify additional flags, like the one we have already seen. If you add 4 O, then this is a load memory scan line instruction. And that tells the Antic chip where to load the uh, data from for displaying in that uh, mode line. We have additional bits that we can set, and I will talk about them later. What we have seen is the conditional jump for the vertical blank. So it tells the antic chip to not do anything and wait until the vertical blank ends. And then restart the uh, display list. This is the 4-1 that you have seen. Then we have uh, special capabilities that I will tackle in a separate part. And that is the scrolling. You can enable soft scrolling for the different mode lines. And that is one one hand vertical sc soft scrolling and then horizontal soft scrolling. And in any case, you can set the topmost bit with a value uh, 80. And, and that means for the next line following this line in the display list, generate an interrupt. That will also be part of a separate section. So let's construct our own display list. And we do so by reproducing what uh, the graphic zero typically does. So let's start creating our example code. I create a folder for part 11 display list basics. I create a new file, part 11. I set the origin. Uh, I define the display list. What I typically do for this, I use a feature in maths which is called locals and I call it DL and it ends with and local. This defines a section, a named section. And within that section, we now replicate what we have seen on the 
on the graphics and zero display list. So we define with the byte statement 707070. So these are three times eight empty scan lines. So next what we have seen is there was a mode line and this mode line had additionally the uh, bit number six set so it was four and we have the address of the screen memory behind it. So I will define the screen memory in a second. I already know how I will name it. I will name it SM for screen memory and with the A operator I can tell Matt that this is not a single byte but a 16-bit address. So next is I have to define all the bytes, uh, all the <laughs> uh, mode 2 scan lines. I can do it as such. I can do 02, 02, 02, 02, 02. but it's cumbersome. I can do it like this. I can write 23 times 02. And I can now end the display list with the verti wait for vertical blank instruction, which is 41, followed by the address of the display list. So this is wait vertical blank jump DL. Yeah, and this is load memory scan at SM. So we have not yet defined the screen memory, so I do the same here. I define a local memory area and I put in here now hello world and, and local. This should already compile. Let's check. Okay, it does. Um, but of course it does not really start. Uh, it would start but it would crash because there is no 6502 code in here. So what do we need to do to make this display list active? Not much. Uh, we can have a star label and what we do is we move the address of the display list into the shadow register of the display list pointer. So I say move word with the accumulator. So move a 16-bit value and namely the constant value of the display list and we move it to the display list pointer. So this is set display list pointer. And after that we should not go somewhere and just wait here and to make sure we start at the right address I say the start address for the executable is this one. Okay, let's try. And we see a hello world. Yeah, Altira here also shows uh, where all this was loaded to. And we can now check the display list pointer and it points to 200D. And at 200D we see our display list now. And now we can start playing around. This is what we're here for. So what we can do is, uh, because I don't want to generate now a lot of um, lot of data, so for something to display we can just pick what I always like to pick, the address of the character set. Because I know there is data in, so let's start. If we now fetch the data from the character set, this is what is displayed on the screen. And now we can change even more. We can, for example, remove these empty scan lines. And we will see that the screen has moved up a bit. Some programs use this to display more than 24 lines or more than 192 scan lines. Okay, but the fun part is now, of course, to go and change the mode values. And now let's showcase the different mode values. We have 15 different modes. So it starts with mode 2. And now I replicate this uh, line. And what I do is I simply add 1. So mode 3, mode 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
8, 9, 10. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and what you see is I use the same address for all of them so you can see how the same data is represented differently in the different modes. So what do we have? We have first mode line which is as it was before it's a graphic zero mode line. NTIC mode 3 is mostly unknown because there is hardly any use for it. Uh, it's like graphics 0, but as you can see, some characters are shifted top to bottom by 2 pixels. So the overall height of this mode line is 10 scan lines, and what it brings is it can display um, characters with like a G. Uh, with their pixels to the lower part. Then we have the multicolor character modes, mode 4, mode 5. We have the um, single color character modes, mode 6 and mode 7. And then you see now here a different number of pixels in sizes that become smaller and at the same time the number of color reduces, so the last line is graphics 8 or mode F, which is the highest resolution with the lowest number of colors. Yeah, and for uh, finishing this um, part, I would like to create a more reasonable display list to show you how you can really make use of the different modes. So let's start with a mode with some uh, blank scan lines. Let's add some more so we can center uh, the text. Then I start with a huge text as a heading. So this is mode 7 with the address of the screen memory, followed by another blank line. Then we can have um, a smaller text line and then maybe even a high resolution text line. So let's check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now oh, this should fit. Let's do it like this. Oh, and maybe even write it correctly. With a lot of text. Yeah, probably I misaligned it. Let's check how it looks like. Ooh, that was accidentally correct. Yeah, see you in the next part.